Welcome to Apex Online. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so glad you've tuned in and I'm excited about all that God's going to do in these next few moments and really believing that you're going to hear from heaven and that God is going to encourage you today. Well, thank you for joining us and if you haven't done so already, why don't you say hi in the chat? We'd love to hear from you. Even if you're watching this afterwards, it'd be so good to know where you're watching from today. Hey, we're delighted in a few moments we are going to hear from Scott Wilson. He's going to bring an amazing message. But before we hear from him, we're going to worship together. So come on, let's unite our hearts and sing together as we worship the living God.
Thank you to our praise and worship team for leading us once again. And what a privilege it is for us to be able to worship together. Do you know that you are valuable to God? He really cares about you. Jesus said that you are more valuable than so many other things in this world. He actually said that he, he knows the very hairs on your head. You're precious to him. His thoughts about you amount to more than the grains of sand on the seashore. He loves you. And I want to encourage you today that maybe you're watching from home and you need to be reminded of this, that He cares and He loves you. And He also promises this. He gives us this opportunity that we can cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us. I want to pray for you right now and as I'm praying, why don't you cast your cares to him? He, he's willing to receive them. And he will uplift you and he will support you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. And I give you praise because you care about me. You care about everyone who's watching right now. Father, I thank you for that. And I pray if anyone today who's watching me, Lord, is feeling the cares of this life, I pray that they would cast them onto you and that they would receive your care, your support, your strength. 
Lord, for those that maybe are downcast at this time, will you lift their heads? For those that are troubled and maybe need some direction in life, will you grant them wisdom? Lord, for those that are maybe going through a, a situation in life that they can't seem to find a way out, Lord, I pray that you would give them vision. And Lord, today I pray for the families of everybody who's watching. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would care for each one. Lord, that if there are any sick among them, I pray that they would know your healing power. So Father, we say thank you that you care, that you place value on us. And we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I said earlier, we are delighted to have Scott Wilson with us. Scott and his wife Linda live in Denmark and they have been a blessing to the church in Europe and around the world. And we're grateful that once again Scott is with us in person in our services, but he kindly provided this video message ahead of time. So why don't you encourage Scott as he comes to bring this message today? Hi there to Apex Church and Peterhead and all of those of you watching online. There might be some watching online from further away than Peterhead and we welcome you to, the, to the, this service right now. Um, I'm so excited to be again hanging out with uh, Neil and Phyllis and the team. Uh, there at Apex Church, I always enjoy it. It's been two years almost now since I've been there and uh, I'm certainly enjoying the process so far, just traveling around again, getting involved in church life and whatever that takes, I'm doing it. And I'm sure you are too in this amazing days we live in. And so today I want to start the message I have for you by reading a passage that some of you will know and found in 1 Samuel 17. It's a story of David and Goliath. It's a, it's a really relevant passage for the times we have lived in because this story is, of course, is the story of a young man who faces a Goliath on behalf of the nation of Israel. And uh, he's in this massive process where the nation of Israel made a deal with the Philistines, who were their enemy at the time, that whoever won the fight against the Goliath would win the battle altogether. So it just took one person to go down and fight Goliath. David turns up to the battle. He's watching what's going on from the sidelines and he sees all of this happening around him. And in 1 Samuel 17, it says this, David said to the Philistine, or the giant, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty and the armies of Israel. And this young man, you know, he, he's, he's sort of uh, watching this giant, uh, massive giant in front of him, def defy who God is, defy the armies of Israel, defy the people of God, and starts to get rather concerned by this. So he decides to take him on, as you know. The story is well known. Most people know the story of David and Goliath, even if they're uh, not experienced Christians or church people. They talk about it in the secular world as well. So the story of David, David and Goliath is, is not uncommon to us. And he, he takes on this fight. And we know that David ran down the side of the mountain to the, to, to, towards the giant, picked up a couple of stones, put one in a sling, fired the sling off, hit the giant in the middle of the forehead, downed the giant, and then cut off his head and took it home to mum. I don't know what he did with it, but he, he won the battle that day and was the hero of the time. And I think what happens a lot of the time is in life, we tend to talk about fighting our Goliaths. And I would say that probably the last two years for many Christians has been a Goliath moment, having to fight the Goliath, the Goliath of life, the Goliath of a pandemic, the Goliath of uh, being uh, restricted in life and so on, businesses, challenged lives challenged and we've fought a Goliath and, and I think to some degree that's rather interesting story to to listen to and watch and, and for me it's sort of like quite strange and I'll tell you why because I think really in our Christian experience we only face a Goliath every so often we don't face a Goliath uh, every day now the reason I say this is because we've seen so many um, battles going on that we can almost think that everything we face is like facing a Goliath. But the reason I don't believe we actually do face Goliaths regularly in our lives, we have a fight, but not a Goliath, is because David had a number of things in place to be ready to take on his Goliath. Well, the first one we know is that he had 
uh, already done some battle with some uh, a lion and a bear. And he, maybe before that, he had even taken on a wild dog or uh, as a child, a small cat, <laughs> or, or even as a young kid, a couple of snails. We don't know, but he crushed the head of some snails at two years old and delivered this to his mum and dad, like my grandson does. He comes out the garden and, and he takes on the, the uh, massive process of dealing with these, um, what do you call it, these snails for me. And uh, he brings them in and shows me the snails, which is really nice of him because now I don't have to put any poison out. He's killing them all off. Um, I think sometimes in life we're actually dealing more with with snails and wild dogs and maybe a lion and a bear than a goliath and there's some reason for that too. Uh, I, I can point out at least probably uh, three or four of these. The first one is David had uh, a mindset and you have to have a mindset to fight a goliath, a, a mindset that says, I can do this. If you notice this in, in the story, he had this mindset of, who are you that defy the armies of God? And you know, if you haven't got this powerful mindset in the fight, this, this mindset of, we can do this, we can break through, this is nothing really to us, then you're not really defeating a Goliath. I would say, when you take on a lion and a bear, you're looking at it and thinking to yourself, what the heck is this I've got to deal with here? And in a Goliath, the mindset's different because you've already done those things. Maybe what we've experienced in this time, and probably will do in the, in the future, is our battles and fights we need to take to be ready to take on Goliath. So he had a mindset. The second thing is he had a lot of experience. Um, he'd been looking after sheep, he'd dealt with wolves, he'd dealt with, the, with lots of things coming against him. He was a shepherd boy who knew certain skills. Certainly, uh, he, he had experienced um, this uh, lion and bear, so he knew how this looked. I mean, as, as, as I'm sure that as David ran towards Goliath after flinging sling shots at lions and bears, he looked at the, lion, the giant's head and thought to himself, this head is too big to miss. And some Christians look at life and think this thing is too big to handle. And he had a flip that round in his mind and said, I can't miss this giant. I can't miss this opportunity. I've already been here and done this before. I think the third thing is he, he had a skill set. And that skill set was developed over time. It wasn't something he just was naturally able to do. We have a skill set we manage and we work with and something we have to develop in our lives. As we take on the fight in our own lives, we learn skills and certain, uh, I, I look at some of my friends who are, I believe are actually in the moment of fighting massive Goliaths uh, in their church life, their world, their business. And I can see that what's happened is they've built skill up over many years of practice and many years of working was in certain areas and now they just they're well skilled to deal with what they have to deal with and i think the fourth one of course is opportunity you have to have opportunity and we should never let an opportunity of fighting a goliath or any fight for that matter to to miss out on that chance of taking an opportunity to fight we are born to fight. It's the way we are structured, created, the way we are built in God, and that is to learn to fight. And really, that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about our capacity to fight. If there's ever been a time when we have needed to be men and women who can fight, it's probably now. But what I've noticed is a lot of people struggle with even the concept of a fight. The idea that, well, do I have to really fight? Uh, surely somebody can provide for me. This can happen this way. This can change this way. Now, I wonder if sometimes we become more dependent on government systems, uh, possible uh, bank balances and, and things we have built around us, rather than the ability to stand up and fight something and say, I've got to fight. Now, I'm not talking necessarily about things outside of us. Most of the fight is internal within us. It's the voices we have to deal with. As I said before, David had a mindset, but he had to fight certain other voices as he went through developing that mindset before he got to the point where he could take on this Goliath in such a way that he could defeat him. And, and I think what I'm saying today is we need to learn, I've needed to, to learn over these years, the capacity of fighting the internal issues that you deal with so often in your life. And they come and go all the time, don't they? 
So today I want to talk to you about the ability to fight, because what I thought to myself was, how much does Paul the Apostle, particularly Paul, since he wrote most of the New Testament, deal with this idea of fight in Scripture? And of course, we know that Paul dealt with it an awful lot. He talked a lot about the capacity for the Christian to fight. And that's something we need to pick up, don't we, in our spirit and our lives and our internal shaping of ourselves, that we can take that Goliath one day because we've learned the capacity to fight. And I'd ask the question sometimes, even of myself, where has my fight gone? Have I lost the capacity to fight? Where is the fight that I used to have even as a younger man? David, when he took on Goliath, was about 18 or 19. And I guess as you get older in life, certainly older in the Christian experience, you can start to just take things for granted and maybe forget our capacity to need to fight. Fight inside, fight the desires, fight the stuff that's going on. But we have to constantly be in that framework, don't we, of taking on the fight. So I've picked this up. I've taken a few verses that Paul writes and I'm going to unpack them for you quickly today. Some of you have been around a while will know these and I hope they help you in your journey. And if you're listening today and it's your first time or you're a seeker, somebody looking for a relationship with God, I, I want to apply these to you because there's nothing more important than you engaging in a relationship with God yourself, that one that uh, helps you fight possibly where you are right now in your world. Anyway, the first one is 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Paul writes this, Therefore I run, not with uncertainty, but I fight, and not as one who beats the air. Now, Paul used a lot of imagery, as we know, you know, he talked about the armour of God. Uh, and, and he picked up this idea from being in prison. And the armour of God is a, is a great message for this time now, isn't it? The, the helmet of salvation, making, for, making sure that your, your thought life is thinking the right things, the saving things, the things that save you. The shield of faith that we have faith right now. And it's an amazing thing, faith, because I've heard a priest, I've preached it myself, that the opposite of faith is fear. And, and, and I think biblically that needs to be questioned a little because if you read scripture, it says that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So the opposite of faith is not hearing the word of God in your life, not experiencing God's word enough for it to be a voice into your life. It, fear is a consequence of something else. It's the end result. So the opposite of faith is not hearing God's voice. So, you know, somebody could be faithless in life, and that's okay because they haven't heard anything, so they can't respond in faith. Unfaithfulness would be where you uh, have heard something but have chosen to ignore it, chosen not to do it. And, and we have that shield of faith, don't we? We have the, the sword, uh, that, that is that sword of um, um, protection that comes out, the Word of God, the sword of the Word of God, the belt of truth, and so on. Never have we seen metaphoric uh, imagery from Paul that's so relevant to now. And he's talking here in this one about shadow boxing. You know, uh, he must have watched some of the athletes who, who, who did this type of boxing, but nobody was around, nobody was there. He was on his own and he was doing some shadow boxing and he said i'm not that guy i'm not actually fighting shadows i'm not pretending i am in a fight he and he says i'm fighting not as one who beats the air i'm in a real fight i've determined in myself that i know i'm fighting something someone beyond it. it's myself my inner voices the stuff in me possibly the devil as well i've got to fight hard and and he's not playing a game he's saying this is a serious thing let's get out stand up and take our fight internally in ourselves and really build that capacity to take on the enemy the thoughts the processes that are going on and defeat them and you know when i watch some christians are walking around spiritually speaking through life they're sort of you know walking around doing this and you say what are you doing and i'm fighting and it's more like they're doing a ballerina dance or something it's not a fight it's it's very bad shadow boxing. Come on, guys, we've got to learn to stand up in our lives, put on the, the arm of God, and take on that fight like never before internally and fight those things that can so easily defeat us on the inside. Not, not a shadow, shadow boxer, but that we actually really do understand the power of the fight. And that's what Paul talked about. He certainly knew the power of fight and how to fight and how to deal with internal things and all the things he had to go through to make his life, his ministry, his divine purpose 
uh, outworked and, and come to fulfillment. Another one he writes about, <clears throat> there's two of them actually, in 1 Timothy 6.12. They're different ideas, but similar context. Uh, and 2 Timothy 4.7. Let me read them to you. Fight the good fight. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called about and which you have a good, strong confession in, in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith, he says. And then in 1 Timothy 4.7, this is later, coming at the end of his life, he writes, I have fought the good fight, fight, I've finished the faith race. I'm starting to do these, uh, these, these slurrings now. I have kept the faith, faith, faith. I have kept, I fight the good fight. I have kept the race. I have uh, kept the faith. <clears throat> Paul talks of two areas. The first is doing his life. I fight the good fight. The second is at the end of his life, I fought the good fight. Now, this is interesting because I would never have thought faith was a fight. Faith is much more really, isn't it, a gift of God. It's, a, it's something he gives us. We talk about that in 1 Corinthians, the gift of faith. We talk about it about salvation too, having a gift of faith to receive. But actually, Paul talks about faith being something you have to fight for. It can't just be resident on its own. You have to fight for what God has given you. That, so that faith involves a, faith, a fight. Now, he's talking about the faith of life, the faith of God, the faith of theology, the faith of understanding who he is and living in his power. But he talks about it as a good fight, <clears throat> the good fight of faith. I love that because I think it means that you, can, you can't just relax in your faith. You fight this faith, as I said before. You listen to what God is saying, you respond to what he's saying, and then you get up and you fight for that which what you've heard and that which you believe in. Paul lived like that, and he said he died like that. I have fought the good fight of faith. And you know, that's something for me that is very important, because at my time in life, it's not really about the moments that uh, excite me or bring great um, blessing to my world. It's more, am I going to finish well? Am I going to finish my fight the right way? Am I going to die in the faith, completely trusting in God, staying fixed and focused on who he is and what he wants done in my life? And I think this is where not enough people project forward to the end of where they are. I want to talk to some of you young people listening today, maybe under 25. The issue isn't what you have in the moment. The issue is, will you be there in 70 years? The issue is, will you be still fighting your fight as you get uh, go to college, go to go, uh, get a career, get married, have children possibly, all these things that come, create a business, uh, work for somebody, all these things. Uh, then stay true to church life and God and who he is, that takes fight. And will we see you at the end of that day in that fight at 75, 80, 90? I fought the good fight. Paul says the only way you're going to get there is through the fight. And that demands a fight internally, doesn't it? It demands a fight that we have to take in ourselves. It's a mindset, it's a decision. It's something we focus on. It's something we say, I can do this. It's something we plan for. It's something we choose to do. We're not shadow boxing in this thing. We are actually running our race and we're going to fight the good fight of faith. Three good words, isn't it? Good fight faith. Good fight faith. There's some bad fights you don't want to take. And there's some fights that just don't mean a thing and don't change anything. And the sad part of the last two years is seeing people fighting about terminology or what this means or how this affects them and what this does for them. Families have been uh, fractured by some of these things. That's not the right fight. The fight of faith is the right fight. It's a good fight. It's a positive fight. And it's the best fight you can take on. That fight that says, in faith, I'm going to accomplish this thing and get through. And it's not a short-term experience. It's not a Polaroid picture. It's not just some sort of moment. I am going to do this for the next 70 years. I'm going to keep on this fight and I'm never letting go. I love that about our Christian message, that it's good fight faith. And I pray that all of you out there take that into your life and your heart and apply it. Paul writes on this thought, actually, further in, in Galatians 5, 16 and 18. He writes, this, so, so I tell you, live the, the way the Spirit leads you, which is a little like I said about hearing the word and responding to the word living in faith. Then you will not do the evil things that your sinful self wants to. The sinful self wants what it is against the Spirit and the Spirit wants what it is against the sinful self. They are always fighting against each other. 
So you don't do what you really want to do, but you let the Spirit lead you, you will be not under the law. And he says they fight against each other. Now, I don't know what your theology is on all of this, but I know this after many years of being a Christian now. I have two things going on, two voices sometimes. Actually, those who know me well know I've got many voices, but that's another thing. And uh, we have these two voices, the voice of right and wrong, the voice of, uh, of myself and the voice of the Spirit. Now, truthfully, they are in battle all the time. But it's me who takes the fight and says, I'm going to fight for the voice of the Spirit. I'm going to fight for the right voice. I'm fighting for the thing in me that is correct. And all of us know that that's a continual, never-ending fight, and regardless of what your theology is in practice and experience, I'm afraid to say there's these constant challenges that go on between the two voices. The voice that says, I'll do it my way, and the voice that says, no, you do it God's way. You listen to the Word of God. You listen to what He says and respond that way. And more than ever before, do we need to be sinking our teeth into the Word of God. More than ever before do we need to be reading through the Scripture as much as we can. Some of these challenges that are out now to read the New Testament in a month or the Bible in, in 30 days are brilliant for us because they inspire us to hear God and also respond in faith. Might I, might I add, it helps reinforce the right voice. But don't be confused by this. There is a fight going on internally in each of us that wants it our way and we have to understand that is a fight and we need to deal with it and we need to be the men and women of God who face up to it and say I'm done with this I'm following God's leading and God's voice in these things and I'm gonna fight those things that tell me otherwise so Paul has outlined these amazing ideas hasn't he of, of don't be the shadow boxer in the fight that we have be a boxer a fighter who knows you've got a real fight and you've got to take it on he talks about the good fight of faith and how you have to do that in your life as well it's both now as you live and also when you end and then he talks about the fight that goes on internally between the two ideas camps the two thoughts the two proposals that are fighting within us and that's a fight we need to take the last one I want to mention is a bit of a staggering verse for me because as I was studying this and researching it I came upon this verse and it's Paul is on his way to Macedonia and, and things are not going too well for him. Busy time in his life, hard time in his life, hardship everywhere. Uh, and it says this in 2 Corinthians 7, 5. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. Now, when I read that, that uh, passage, I saw the fighting without and I started to pick up. And then I read the next, the end of it, it fear within. I've never heard Paul write like that before, fear within. He writes four things here. He says, my body had no rest. We were afflicted at every turn. Now, the body had no rest. We all know what it's like to be physically drained and unable to, to work or do. The energy goes and you can't do what you want to do. A little stress, sometimes even leaning towards uh, you know, major stress. The body suffers. The second is, I was afflicted at every turn. That's talking about his role as a church leader. There were all, sorry, that's talking about his uh, problem with the Roman Empire, who were fighting him all the time, trying to lock him up, flick, afflictions all around, possible jail terms and things like this. Then he says, fighting without. That's where he's talking about the church life, actually, because there was lots of conflicts going on in the church, and he had to patch them up and fix them. So he's talking about, my body was tired, I had afflictions coming against me, and I had these problems with... Um, church management and life that could be the same of what you talk about in your business all these things or your workplace or schooling you've got these afflictions going on then he says fear within and that's the one that intrigued me and I thought to myself I need to research this so I got into it a little bit and studied around you can do the same yourself the idea of fear within was this the commentators say that in the in the language that he's using in the time he was in his greatest issue was that the pressures against him, the weakness in the body, the afflictions out there, the problems in the church, he had a fear that, listen to this, that he would withdraw from life by a summer house or a caravan <clears throat> and just escape. And boy, has that happened in the last two years way too often. We've seen Christians who've got all these challenges around them, 
they had learned during this period of time, not just Christians actually, lots of people in the, in the around the globe, who their body was weary. They realized this through these last two years. They had all these issues they had to deal with, leadership stuff going on, family life. And they made a choice to succumb to the idea that it's easier to withdraw, to pull back, to say, I've had enough, I'm too tired. I'm not going to get engaged in church life much anymore. I'll just keep working from home. I'll buy a summer house. I heard of a story of a guy who worked in London and he had a, a, an apartment in London, a high performer person, and um, you know, really much involved in his workplace. And he bought a, uh, a house in Peterborough during COVID time to get away from it all and he had the opportunity. And then when they started to have to come back to work, his boss said, you need to be at work. And he said, yeah, but I live in Peterborough. And the boss said, yeah, well, that's the choice you made that had nothing to do with your job. You need to fix that one up. And I thought, isn't that crazy? That we've made choices like this. We've pulled back. We have withdrawn in our life. Um, the fear within has taken hold. And actually what's happened is we've made choices to move out of, say, volunteering, serving God, doing the right things, because we have succumbed to the time. And I believe that is a fight we have to take. It's a fight we have to be very careful. Nothing wrong with those things. Those things are all very good, healthy. They restore us. But they are not the meaning of life for us as Christians. They're not the purpose or the reason. The reason we have gift sets, talents, and abilities is so that we might build God's kingdom, which is particularly expressed through his church. And so we need to engage and rise up and climb in to that which God is doing. And um, I know in my life through this time, it's sort of at my age, you sort of start to realize, is it time to make a transition to do this? No, I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to succumb to that fear within and pull back. And I hope that is a word to you too, that all of this is word. My word basically today is let's not forget the power of the fight we have and the ability we have to fight and all the protections we've been given in that fight. Sometimes we can externalize that fight so much that if we don't feel it within, it doesn't mean anything. If it's outside, we'll try and deal with it. Actually, it's internal. It's more about the fight within me that I have to take than it is about this one or that one or what he said, she said, or what they're doing or what policies are in place and all the rest. They are important to us, but it's this one internally in my heart and my head that I have to figure out. I encourage you then, Apex Church, to take the fight and fight well. And fight with all of your heart. Fight those things that say, succumb to the time. Pull back. Drift a little. Get passive on this. Pull back. I encourage you to fight and to say, I, don't, I can't help you make any decisions and I'm not... A, asking you to make certain decisions. I'm asking you to pick up the battle cry of the fight and realize your Goliath will be defeated only as you take the first steps in the fight. Because one day, like many of us, you'll face a Goliath, but you need to have got there through rehearsal, through practice of fighting. For those of you who are listening to me who may not be Christian, who may not be people involved in church life and you've just switched on this program and, you, and you're interested in what it means, well, I'm, I'm particularly sure that you probably have been through a fight yourself. And the only way you can succumb to the pressures of this is to start engaging in a relationship with Christ. I challenge you as we finish this meeting, there'll be opportunity for you to connect with him and say, I want to take up this uh, fight, walk with God, make a change in my life and get moving in the right direction. By accepting Christ and all his work in your life, you can start to realize how powerful a change can be on the inside. The truth is, if we get it right on the inside, all of the outside is different. Let me pray for you guys as you're listening here, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the service online. Father, we thank you for this message of the fight, and I pray that men and women will pick it up and take it in their life and use it to extend the kingdom of God around about them. Lord, we are called to fight. That's why we have the armor of God and so many other things in our lives. Let us be those men and women who choose to fight. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you so much, Scott. What an incredible message. Always enjoy listening to Scott. He's always encouraging, always challenging, and always gets me thinking. I'm sure you've enjoyed that today as well. Hey, I wonder if you have been impacted by that message. Why don't you reach out to us and connect with us so that we can support you at this time? Well, I'd love to see you in our church services next Sunday. You'll be able to sign up from 2 p.m. today. Check your inbox and make sure you're in the room next Sunday for our services. Well, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week. You are for me, you're not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, you're not against me. I am who you say I am.